Hello, I'm Betty Swan, and welcome to our show, Wisdom in the Night, where you get help for the tough decisions in your life. Tonight I have a great guest for you. He is an actor, speaker, youth minister, author. His name is Warner Miller, but you may recognize him from Luke Cage. See if you do. Welcome, Warner. This is great. They're going to love hearing your story. I think so. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. I want you to kind of give me a little bit of your background. Tell me about your family, how, what they thought about you being an actor, what made <laughs> you even think that way. Sure. Okay. Uh, so uh, I am born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I grew up for a time in New Jersey. Um, my family uh, heritage, they're from Barbados. Uh, but I've never been there, so I'm about as American as apple pie. Um, and uh, growing up, I was a very shy kid. Uh, I was into the music business, or into music, uh, early on because my mother was actually in the music business. Uh, really? What did she do? Well, she uh, managed money for a lot of, um, I guess, well-known uh, R&B singers of the 90s. Like, yeah? Uh, like who? Yeah. Uh, I mean, names that are probably, a lot of them aren't even known, mm -hmm. like Al B. Shore and... And uh, Luther Vandross and, oh, wow. and, and people like that. Mm -hmm. So I was into the uh, music scene uh, at a relatively young age. Um, I got to college and, uh, well, actually in high school, uh, there was a girl that I liked and I was very, very shy, so I didn't have the courage to talk to her nor that I know what to say. Um, but what I did know was that she was auditioning for this play, Fame. And I said, you know, I just thought, you know what, I'll audition for the play <laughs> because uh, I, I know she'll be there and I'll get a chance to at least look at her because, uh -huh. you know, God knows I won't be able to say anything to her. Um, long story short, I ended up auditioning for this play, getting into the play, hating that I was in it, and she didn't get in it. Oh, um, funny. But, I, but your whole life came, came that the, way and look where your first that, foray into it was. Exactly. Because of a girl. Because of a girl. How <laughs> familiar is that story for so many other people <laughs> yes. out there? It all started with this girl. Um, <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so I, I actually ended up doing a really good job in it and, and people, you know, uh, were, you know, congr congratulating me. But I never really took it serious because, you know, I, I never had any aspirations to become an actor or... You never thought about it? Not at all. I, I was shy. And, and, and to be honest with you, there weren't any actors around in my neighborhood that I could really, like, oh, I want to be like them. I want to be, you know, there mm -hmm. really wasn't um, those type of uh, influences around. Uh, but uh, fast forwarding, I, I get to college and I'm in college for music business because, again, I have my mother as an example. Um, and I knew a bit about it, you know, I had been around those environments growing up. Um, my sophomore year in college, I saw a posting for a play. So I was like, ah, oh, you know, what the heck, you know, I'll, I'll audition for this if you, just because the only other play I'd been in is in high school. And wouldn't it be fun to just audition? Ended up getting the lead in it. It's a play called Pippin. Oh, a musical. wow. Did you sing and dance? I sung and danced as if my life depended on it. Well, how'd you dance? Did you take dance lessons? Yeah, that was all provided by the, by the school. Dance you, lessons. You are a guy who is getting trained <laughs> the craziest way. I know, kind of kicking and screaming. Um, but, but again, I ended up loving it uh, a great deal and getting just accolades from the, the staff and from my uh, classmates. And the professor there pulled me to the side and he said, you know, Warner, I, I want you to be in, in my program. Uh, you know, at that point, I'm a music business major. I don't want to change this very stable music business degree for this, you know, whimsical, yes. you know. Come and go. Come and go. Feast or theater degree, you uh -huh. know. Um, and, I, and I knew my mother wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily uh, allow that. Or, now, were, were you, was she a single mom? Well, so I... Uh, I never knew my father, my real father, uh, and uh, my stepfather, who was the only man that I recognized as mm -hmm. my father, because he's the only man I've known, um, I didn't meet him until I was about five years old. Um, so I, I grew up with a stepfather, mm -hmm. uh, but I never knew my father. Mm -hmm. um, but your mom had a big influence on you if you were worried about big. what she would think. Of course, of course, of course. My mother was, was and is very focused. As an aside, uh, 
she just recently, and by recently I mean eight years ago, went back to law school, and now she's a lawyer. She decided that I think when she's around 50 years old that she wants to be a lawyer, and now she's a lawyer. Now that is a beautiful thing. Yeah. That for all yeah. the women watching, absolutely, that are going to absolutely. their second or third job this hour of the night and thinking, I really wanted to be a lawyer. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and she says, you know, because she uh, became pregnant with me very uh, relatively young. Uh, when she's a teenager, and um, she had always wanted to be a lawyer, but you know, a kid life. kind of mm -hmm. in life, you know, uh, put that on hold. But you know, 30 years later, she said, you know what? I want to go back to school, and she did it, and now she's a prosecutor in New Jersey. How about that? Yeah, Amazing. yeah. So, so I had that example uh, for me, that very, uh, you know, uh, strong work ethic. You know, you, you need to, you know, apply yourself, and I just didn't. Well, I knew that an acting degree wouldn't be something that she would subscribe to. So, how'd you tell her? Well, I, I kind of found a loop, well, with the assistance of the acting theater coach at the school, kind of mm -hmm. found a way around it. What he allowed me to do was to take all the classes that a theater major would take without necessarily changing my major. So I still graduated with a degree in music business, mm -hmm. but also I was able to take speech classes and voice classes and acting classes as though I were a theater major. So I ended up unofficially graduating with a, a double major uh -huh. in uh, music business and theater. And uh, when I graduated, I realized that, you know, I don't want to be in the music, music business. I, I, I want to be an actor. I, now, how did you come to that conclusion after getting your degree? Well, you know what? It's some, well, it, it was kind of a process uh, upon taking classes because I began taking acting classes my sophomore year mm -hmm. in college. And there's something powerful about finding your niche, you know, what you can do really well. And I realized that acting was something that came natural to me. It was something that, uh, that I, I could do well. And music although I appreciated it and loved it and I'm still a fan of many different musical genres, I realized that it wasn't something that I was necessarily passionate about and, or gifted in. Um, uh, so there was something empowering about finding something that I'm really good at. Mm -hmm. You know, I found, you know, good or bad, but I found a, a sort of identity in this is what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. I should also note that also while I was in uh, college, I also got saved. Um, my junior, senior year in college. Had you been in church before then? Well, I, you know, like, like, well, I don't want to assume to say most inner city kids, but you know, I, I had a you know, grandmother that took me to church all the time whenever I was with her, and my mother, you know, from time to time we went to church, but you know, I wasn't, I didn't necessarily. Leave or know what I was doing or what right. was happening, right. you know. And you know, I had plenty of examples of, uh, or plenty of bad examples of what Christians or Christianity was. So it was very, it was relatively easy for me to kind of chalk Christianity up as being, oh, that's a thing, you know, that's a. And not for me. Yeah, not you know, I was kind of uh, apathetic to it. Mm. Oh, you know? really? Yeah, it wasn't. It was like, ah, you know, it's just something that people do. I don't. I, I wouldn't necessarily equate it to something that's true or worth, you know, investing time and research in. So how'd you um, get the real deal? Well, it just. And there is a real deal. That there is, is a very worth real deal. Everything. It's a very real deal. Uh, while I was in, so something happened to me uh, in high school, uh, my senior year, that I made one of those um, God you know those prayers God if you you know get me out of this thing you know I promise to find who you are it, it, one of those prayers mm -hmm. um, Mine God, were always get me out of this and I'll never do it again I promise yeah I, I wasn't that I wasn't that uh, that well no it, it was the thing that I was in was the stakes were high enough to where I knew that. Um, if it turned out in a negative way, it would ruin the rest of my life. Wow. And um, God in his grace and favor um, delivered me or, or he, he didn't allow me to go through or, you know, be in that situation. So uh, to my word, you know, I, I said that I was going to, you know, research who he was. However, 
in the back of my mind, and it's something that I would have never admitted to at that moment, I had already dismissed Christianity as being something that was true. Um, so even though on the surface my search for God was very noble and honest, in fact, it was kind of dishonest because I had already deleted Christianity and Christ from the equation. I said, you know, maybe you're, you know, Buddha or Muhammad or one of these others, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're probably not Jesus Christ because I know enough Christians to know that, you know, mm -hmm. this thing is for the birds. Um, it just so happens that the college that I went to, uh, because it was an entertainment business college mm -hmm. and uh, many different religions were represented here. I, I met my first atheist there, my, fo my first, you know, practicing Buddhist and Hindu and Jehovah's Witness and Mormon and, and, and Muslim and Nation of Islam and all these different religions that in my neighborhood I didn't really see a lot. You know, the most we got were like uh, Rastafarians or things like that or uh, Muslims. So because my school was like that, I was able to kind of listen to all of their conversations about God and what they thought about God and what. And, you know, now this was the span of, of a couple, couple of years, so it didn't happen overnight. But what I began to see is that each of those different religions and worldviews had an opinion about Jesus Christ. All of That's them. That's interesting. I've never thought all about that. They all had an opinion. And, and why would they? All of their opinions on Jesus Christ were, I mean, f about 98, 99 percent, he's a great person. He's a great guy. You know, it was always a positive, uh, a positive report. A negative, it was always right. a positive. So, you know, in my, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, very deliberate search and, and noble search for God, like, OK, uh, maybe there's something to Jesus. And so how did you actually get it? Well, I, at first I started to read books, not the Bible, but other books that had a reference to or spoke about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And again, all of these, even, even the Quran, you know, has a very, you know, in the Quran he's Isa, mm -hmm. but a very positive report on Jesus. Like they mm -hmm. say he's born of a virgin, uh, he, he's, he's done miracles and all these things. So eventually, and again, this is a very, this is a shortened version, but eventually I began to uh, read the Bible and really see what it says about Jesus. And, um, you know, I, I, I would like to say that it was through the research, you know, alone and just, you know, being a student, but I, I you know, credit was the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, eventually I, I came to believe that Jesus was and is exactly who he said he was and is. And it's life changing when you it, come it to that, changed, isn't it? It, 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 really it changes did. everything. It really did. So, like, let me ask you this. If that happened to you and you were in acting, is that right? Or you were in college? I was still in college. Okay, so you got out of college, you went mm -hmm. into the acting world mm -hmm. as a true believing mm -hmm. Christian, and you encountered all kinds of people there. Mm -hmm. um, how did you? How did you live your life as an actor? How do you live your life as an actor now mm -hmm. with your faith? And uh, I know you're a real thinking person mm -hmm. also because I think in your bio you went to Oxford or? Later on, yes. Later on, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So on. kind of tell us, like obviously God's purpose for your life was to act mm -hmm. and then you're still doing that yes, regularly. You uh, speak and mm -hmm. you work with youth. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard that. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you say that all of this rolls into you really living your life regularly? Sure. Um, well, I should say this. Uh, there, I, when, when I graduated from college, I didn't immediately uh, go into the acting world. Oh, I thought you did. By God's grace, I was given a, a enough time, a little bit of time to mature mm -hmm. in my faith, find mm -hmm. some grounding. Um, in, in, his, in his gospel and understand exactly why I believe what I believe. That gave you, know. you a foundation. It really did. It really did. And, and it was invaluable. Um, when, I, when I became an actor, professional actor, um, by that time I, I, would, I had already been walking with the Lord for at least five to six years. Oh, um, okay. And um, being an, uh, a believer in this business, it does give me a perspective that... Um, Number one, uh, this business doesn't define me. 
uh, and act, being, being an actor doesn't define who I am. Acting is what I do and what I love to do, but it's not who I am. My identity is in Jesus Christ. It's such a big deal that you know that. And it's very freeing because as an actor, you know, especially, you know, starting out, you know, you have, you have audition after audition after audition where you're told no, 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 not good enough, no, no, no. And it can wear on you. It can, you know, I'm not good enough. Or, or you begin to place your value on how much you're working or the or the, the the bigness of the project. Well that's what you hear people say, you know, you're only as famous as your last show. Exactly. And, exactly. And that can be exactly. it can it can wear, wear you on down. You. Absolutely. Wear you down. Yeah. Absolutely. And well now what kind of acting have you actually done? What shows have you been in or have you uh, I know you've done that Luke Cage, but what else have you done movies? Have you yeah, done stage? Yeah. The first movie that I was in was a movie by the name of American Gangster. Uh, with Denzel Washington, mm -hmm. Russell Crowe, uh, in which I played Denzel Washington's uh, brother. Him. Well, now, who influenced you to go into youth work and into the ministry work? Well, I've always, I've always liked children and teens. I, 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 I've, I've heard people say of me, and I think now, about time, I'm, I'm inclined to believe it. I think I have just a natural affinity of working with teens. You know, some would say because I'm immature myself and <laughs> haven't fully grown up <laughs> all the way, but, uh, but you know, I, I, I like teens. So even before um, uh, uh, gospel-centered ministry was the, was the objective, I just enjoy kids. You know, I, I, I enjoy uh, their uh, just wonder. You know, I, I enjoy that uh, they are, they can tell when someone loves them or don't or doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's really great that you do what you have this feeling for kids mm -hmm. because so many kids don't have a father or their father isn't anybody that they can look mm -hmm. up to. They struggle. And to have a man like you, a man's man, who is very <laughs> intelligent and at the mm -hmm. same time has a care and a concern. Mm -hmm. For young people, it's really unusual. Yeah, I, you know, and and just to give, you know, I, I want my the the man that raised me, um, your my, stepfather, my stepfather uh, was and is a great man, you know. Um, and one of the things that I appreciated about him was, although I wasn't his, um, and we look very, very different, very different. So it's obvious that I'm not his. Um, he. He never made me feel that, like I wasn't his. And, you know, it takes a, a certain type of man to raise another man's child. Mm -hmm. And as a man myself who wants to mentor and be in the life of teens, um, I, take, I take that responsibility. Uh, I don't take it lightly because, uh, you know, it, 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 there is something to be said about coming into the life of a child that isn't your own, um, and doing life with them, and living life with, with them, and mm -hmm. and and making them feel loved—not just saying it, but really investing time into their life. Um, because to your point, you know there aren't many, or th there are far too many, far too many who don't have. But that, you know, you, you can know. even add one more thing into that mix. You went to Oxford. Mm -hmm. Now, why did you go there, and how would that relate with kids and acting and sure. all um, that? That's so unusual that you would go to Oxford, <laughs> England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, Brooklyn boy in Oxford. That should be a title of a book. Um, but I, so uh, the concise story is I had the opportunity to study uh, what's called Christian apologetics, um, which is essentially the 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 art or the ability or the ministry of defending your faith, giving answers, giving reasonable answers for why you believe what you believe. Which uh, is unusual coming from a guy that was tossing Christianity out the door. Sure. And then here you are defending it and going for training. Training, training. Well, it's, it's you know, uh, we have in Scripture, we have Paul who was a persecutor of Christians. Oh, okay. Came, came so to be you, one of the biggest, you know, if not the biggest, you know, evangelists for Christianity. And in First Peter three fifteen, is which is where the word apologetics comes from. It says, "Always be ready to give a reason 
for the hope that is in you, reason, meaning a, apologia or an apologetic for the reason uh -huh. that is. So, so going to Oxford, um, th that was the reason. I wanted to be uh, trained and kind of refined to be able to give answers to the hope that is within me, you know, to be a better communicator of the gospel in context where uh, people don't believe what I believe, whether it's in the, the entertainment business or teens in, in Brooklyn or adults in London, England or wherever I wanted to be. I wanted to be able to be used and to and to be able to articulate the truths of God. So who did you Christ. study under? Who taught you that? Sure. Uh, well, Ravi Zacharias. Uh, he is uh, an Indian-born um, uh, Christian. One uh, probably, as it stands right now, probably the one of the biggest Christian thinkers in the country. Um, uh, he comes from the line of C.S. Lewis, mm -hmm. uh, who is also, you know, a great. He was at Oxford. C.S. Lewis was at Oxford. If you go to Oxford, it's like there's C.S. Lewis memorabilia everywhere. everywhere. I mean, in the whole town, call it C.S. Lewis town. But uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, studying un under Ravi Zacharias and RZIM Ministries, and um, who who are worldwide, and they specialize uh, with going into regions, into contexts, into environments where they where Christianity or the gospel isn't something that people yeah. believe well, or are kinda, antagonistic against. All right, let me ask you this, because you, you, you're you so broad in all of your interests. It seems like it, yeah. What kind of challenges have you encountered in doing all of this? Um, well, I, I, well I, I know one was, um, so right, on one hand you have that I'm an actor, and on another hand you have that, okay, I love the Lord and I love Jesus and I want to, and I want to tell people, I want to communicate that to people. So mo many times you either get the actor who maybe professes that they're a Christian but really doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, hold to it, you know, or, you know, they're not mature. Or you have the, you know, uh, the evangelist or minister who, you know, is so, pardon me, weird that, you know, uh, a, a person in the secular world would, wouldn't want anything to do with that. For me, ministry and acting have never been apart from each other. They've always, I'm an actor, but I'm also, I also love Jesus. Mm -hmm. so, so they work together. They work together. And they should be, it should be like it that, be, not the, separate. And the challenge has been, and maybe it's not, it's less of a challenge now because I, I don't know if I have to explain it as much or feel the need to, but the challenge has been how to reconcile these two worlds for people because I'm either a, like when I went to Oxford, people thought that I was giving up my career. I said, no, I, I just love Jesus. I'll be back and yes. I'll be acting. Well, let me, you know? let me just ask you something. There's a lot of people watching at this time of the night that are really listening to what you're saying mm -hmm. because it's a new slant on things. Mm -hmm. Would you look into the camera sure. and would you talk for just a few minutes here telling people uh, this thing of making it work both places, this, mm -hmm. even young people that are listening to this, how do I b stay a Christian and go out in the world or people in the world, how if I'm in the world, do I put the Christianity with it? Would sure. you look into the camera and just talk to the people because they're going to really be listening to you? Sure, sure. Um, so number one, uh, for, the, for the person who is saved, who, who knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, I would ask you, um, I would implore you, uh, understand why you believe what you believe. Um, know why Jesus Christ uh, is your Savior, is your Savior and not, you know, maybe some other worldview or religion. Um, because the better you can understand and communicate to yourself what you believe, the better you will be to communicate that to someone else. Um, if you don't understand why you believe what you believe, then no one else can understand why you believe what you believe. So that would be the first thing. Know why you believe what you believe about the Savior, Jesus Christ. Along with uh, knowing what you believe and, and why you believe it, uh, the second thing um, is be authentic in who you are in Christ. Um, 
I think uh, two of the, the, the biggest things that are um, desired out of uh, specifically believers in Christ is one, deep thinkers, but also people who are authentic. Um, uh, or as you say, you know, be real. Uh, but be real in Christ, meaning that, you know, uh, I, when I walk out of, of, of my house, I don't check to see if I'm still, you know, Warner. I'm, I'm Warner whether I want to be or not, you know, it's, it's on me. Um, and it's the same thing with my faith. My faith is not something, a jacket that I put on. Uh, it's who I am. So I have no choice but to, you know, I, I guess I do have a choice. I could stifle it, but, um, but that is inauthentic. Um, so if, if Jesus is your Lord and your Savior and you understand why you believe what you believe, then live that out. Because it's one thing to communicate the truth to someone using words, as, as you should. It's another thing to communicate Jesus Christ through how you live. Um, so authentic living. Um, so one, understand why you believe and why you believe it. And then once you do, be authentically a child of the Most High God and Jesus Christ. Warner, that was great. That was so clear and how to really live it out, but know what you believe mm -hmm. and why you believe it. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you that. Where is your faith? What do you believe in? What have you really checked out? Have you really examined everything that Jesus said about himself? And have you looked at the lives that all over the world are giving their life right now because they know that Jesus and he's worth everything. It's just, check it out. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. It wasn't an accident that you turned on the TV. I hope you received some wisdom and that you have a great rest of the night, whether you're going to sleep or you're going to work. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>